colors that we use and the different colors that you see here every color is a different mineral not all of them are is it worthwhile to use them especially the black color the ivory That's the first? Yeah. That's the first time I see this kind of truck touching. Huh. Which means that we're in trouble because my truck is lower and longer. Oh. Okay, Wally, we're not in trouble. Okay, everybody think light. Think light? <laughs> yeah, think light. Yeah. That usually helps. Yeah. Miller, Miller light. Hermican light. Zero gravity like space. <laughs> that was still the wheels. A dragon butt of metal. Still got a few tricks. Yep. Yay! All right. Very yeah. good. Very good. Purple colored uh, rock that yeah. sticks oh, out. Yeah. And also some white uh, rocks on its way. And when it cooled down and solidified back. Back again, it got the mixture of the rocks. It didn't turn black because it didn't went out, it didn't got oxygen. Now, this purple or dark brown uh, stone is a mineral called kaolin. Heard about it? Kaolin? Well, it is used mostly for ceramics industry, but I understand also from some Americans that it is used as medicine for um, uh, stomach ache or stuff like that. The, the rock, most of it is sand rock, it's very soft. And if I'll get it wet, it gets colors. Oh, makeup. Oh, makeup. Actually, ah. sorry? Makeup. Makeup, right. Yes. Cosmetics industry is using minerals not from here, of course, but using it. Yes. Because Sorry? Yes, yeah. they are. Because well, it's very, it's natural. It's not chemicals and stuff like that. Of course, they mix it with oil or water or whatever to make it useful uh, or uh, user friendly. Friendly actually, actually, but it's very good. It's not irritating the skin, and we have it also here. When when I have a group with small kids, they're all they are all turning into Indians or, <laughs> or Hindus. We are coloring all their face, but. Look, if you don't like these colors, we have other colors here. This is a little bit hard one of colors. No way! It's beautiful. You have a little. I'll get, you, I'll get you some. Yeah. You have a little rouge. Too orangey for me. It's perfect for Sheila. Leave it for five minutes. Oh. It's mixed with your natural body fat oil and it will change the scar to your skin tan. No kidding. Wait a second, just lay it on the dark. Look what that oh. one did. That was real dark and see how it, oh, it, yeah. it, it see yeah. kind yeah. of blended. Sediments on um, shallow ocean beds where we have many coral and uh, um, small marine life plankton. When, when Once it's dead, they sink down, it gets pressed and create this uh, rock which is very very hard and it means that actually this area was covered with an ocean mm. and geologists do define this area covered with ocean for about 60 million years 
sedimenting thick layer of limestone. Hmm. This is the first one. You want, if you want, you can pass it around and I'll find another one. This one is sandstone. is It's also sedimental, but comes from, with rivers, not uh, not ocean. It's much softer. It breaks down very easily. You know, the river when it floods, it bring, brings along some sand, and the sand when it sinks down, layer over layer, get pressed, and once again becomes into rock, much softer than the limestone we saw. It's also important to our story. The last one I want to show you is that one, which is basalt. This one is lava that got oxidized, went out, and this one is, well, usually we think of lava exploding outside, but in here, most of the lava we'll see actually just flew uh, through cracks to the surface, didn't explode out as a, uh, an eruption, and this is why the rock is much heavier. When it flies on the air, it gets air bubbles in it, and it becomes much lighter. But these ones, since it just flowed over the surface, is heavier. It's not that important to our story about creating the about the Mahtesh creation, but we see it a lot around here, so you might want to feel it also. Now I'll start working with the with the sand. Yes. <laughs> Well, first of all, the shape of the Mahtesh, as I said, is like, like that. Okay, very long heart. We've been here in Mitzpe mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. and drove down with the road, the curled road, to a, about the center of the Mahtesh, where Ramon River is flowing. Mm -hmm. Ramon River has a very significant role in creating the Mahtesh. I'll show it in a minute. Eventually, this river goes out through the wall of the Mahtesh and flows to the Arava, to the east side of Israel. Okay? Now, let's go back 150 million years back. Okay? We need to pack our lunch. Sorry? <laughs> we need to pack our some food. <laughs> water. Sandstone. At that time, this area was covered with soft sand, just like the Sahara Desert. It was coming here with huge rivers flowing from, um, from east to west to the Mediterranean. On its way, it leveled the surface and also sedimented, sedimented uh, sand, eventually becoming sandstone. Now, 55 million years later, 95 million years ago, we had a, an ocean flood. This ocean, which was called Tethys Ocean, was here for about 60 million years, sedimenting hundreds of meters of limestone. So now we have a situation that the soft layer is at the bottom and the hard layer, sorry, the hard layer is above it. Usually on nature, this is not what we see. Usually on nature, when we, the, the, the lowest you go, the deepest you go, the hardest you get. But here it's the other way around. It's very important to understand it because uh, it's essential for, creation, uh, for the creation of the Mahtesh. Now, this ocean was here, and we had an underground pressure, some tectonic pressure from the under underground. And this de tectonic pressure can create several things. It can rise a mountain, it can create a fault on the ground, it can create a valley. In here, it rose a mountain, Ramon Mountain. So, I'll imitate the process, and it was coming up like that. And I'll use some water from on the outside to make the outside layer a little bit harder than the inside. Well, we have this mountain now. It stands on, on the ocean and the, uh, the level of the water is very close to the edge, to the top of the mountain. And we actually have an, an, an island in that uh, ocean and the process of erosion starts now because the uh, waves just cut off the top of the mountain just like that very very quickly exposing the soft layer inside now we as i said in our first stop 
this area had uh, times that it was much more rainier, actually tropical, and it means a lot of rain uh, coming down. The soft layer was getting deeper and deeper. It's still not a machtesh. The leftovers of the water just spilled from all sides. But in order for us to have a machtesh, we need this mountain to tilt to one of the sides. Now, how do you tilt a mountain? Earthquake. Earthquake, right. But uh, can you be more specific? Which one? Uh, sorry. Which one? Which? which? Well, um, how do we call this area that still remains? It's a rift. A right. rift. Rift. Syrian African rift. Okay. Is actually due to a, a long process. It's okay. not just a single earthquake, right. but is, like it's a catastrophic area. event mm -hmm. that started okay. 20 million years ago. Actually, quite young in geological mm -hmm. speaking. And as you can understand, it's, it was cre uh, done after the ocean went away. The ocean went away about 35 million years ago. Mm -hmm. This uh, um, Syrian African rift started on the south, started, started on Africa, acting like that. The two plates are dividing. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, Easter, the east plate, the, the Jordan plate, is moving faster to the north. Both pl plates are going to the north, but the Jordanian one moves much faster. Okay. And it, it creates, actually, it creates a catastrophic event that um, um, reflected in Israel, in landscape, in uh, plants, in animals that arrive from Africa all the way to the, the Israeli desert. And geological speaking, this, uh, or um, landscape speaking, this uh, event actually made the entire side, uh, uh, east side of the Negev bent towards the east. Rivers that used to cross from Jordan all the way to the Mediterranean now flows back. <laughs> it's a, a scar on the face of the earth, which is very, very deep. This is why we have the Dead Sea, which is the deepest place on earth. This rift is very, very catastrophic, and it actually made this mountain tilt to the east. So we have this side lower than the other side. Now when rain falls down, the water prefers to go to the east. It just it doesn't go to all sides. And slowly and gradually it curves a river in here. And you can see that on the lower part, the, um, the soft layer is exposed. Now if I do it a little bit faster, you will see that the hard layer doesn't have any support mm -hmm. and slowly we'll get to the top of the mountain just like that mm. and eventually we'll have a mahtesh. Oh, now this is what yeah. happened for about That's 150 cool. million years all this uh, stuff went to the Arava sank down on the Arava mm -hmm. and Oh, by the way, the rest of the Mahteshim we have here in Israel are the same process. They are all facing, the, the river that uh, uh, works there is also facing the east because it has the same uh, conditions. And now geologists do accept this, uh, this process and this is what we show. Okay, so just to conclude, we have two significant conditions that made this uh, happen. The first one was that we had the soft layer below the hard one. The hard one was covering it. The second one was that after we had the mountain, we had the Syrian African Rift that tilted it and made the water prefer go to the lowest area and curving down uh, on, its, on its side, creating the Mahtesh. That's, okay. that's an excellent demonstration. I mean, it shows perfectly.